So I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna talk for a few minutes and then and then sort of hand hand everything off to uh, off to Kurt, uh, who's a a comedian. Um, so yeah, so we're gonna talk for a little bit about Jokatron, uh, which is a, an AI that we built that that tells jokes. Um, it, some of the language here may be a little bit different than we're used to hearing in uh, professional conferences. So um, you know. It, if you want to put on headphones, or if that sort of language isn't for you, then you know you, you can sort of act act accordingly. Um, but but in the meantime, uh, yeah, here we go. So so uh, I'll just talk for a little bit about um, yeah. So so who we are. So I'm I'm Mark Hanner, data scientist. Uh, worked with uh, Manuel Mai, uh, another data scientist, uh, and we we built Jokatron. And of course, we needed a domain expert, uh, so we brought in Kurt Kurt Braunohler. Um, to sort of take take the AI, AI for a spin uh, later, um, and there has been a lot of uh, application of AI to the arts um, that we've heard about. You know, like uh, MuseNet from OpenAI generates songs. Um, the Magenta Project from Google AI uh, generates art. Art, if you uh, give give it a, a prompt or topic, it'll it'll you know make a painting about that. Um, there there's AIs that build uh, that uh, write words like Shakespeare. Um, like one, an example is Deep Sphere. Um, I, I think the, uh, the the font there makes it look much more uh, Shakespearean. Um, but you know, so 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 we're used to seeing some sort of encroachment of of AI into the arts, but there hasn't been a lot of comedy, and so that's why Manuel and I, you know, built built uh, built Jokatron. So Jokatron is a generative language AI model um, where you give it a prompt, so like comedy is when, and then uh, you get an output. So we are eating spicy cereal, uh, for instance. Is, is one example. Um, another thing is comedy is when, that's the prompt, you show a random person a fact, uh, is, is, is another uh, example from Jokatron. And the last one is humor is a guy who is live in a shitty neighborhood for some reason. Um, so those are those are some of the examples of, of you know, what, what Jokatron can, can output when you give it a prompt. Uh, but so why is this a hard problem? Um, and I think we'll, we'll try and understand, you know, sort of what's going on with comedy by sort of defunnying a joke. So taking what was there, taking all the humor out of it, and then sort of building it back up to a, a joke that a human wrote to try and understand a little bit about, you know, why this is a hard task. So, so I defunnied uh, a, a joke from, from, from Kurt. Um, and the joke is basically this, the server at the restaurant was bad. Uh, that's sort of how I convey information. So if I was, if I wanted to bore Emmanuel, um, and I was telling him about my day, I'd maybe say something like this, not funny at all. Um, so what does Kurt do to sort of make this statement funny? Um, the first thing he does is he uses a technique called hyperbole, right? So it's an exaggeration to an absurd uh, extreme. And Scott Dykers from, from The Onion, he sort of identified a number of these kind of different filters that you can put on a, a, a statement to sort of make it funny. And, and hyperbole is one of them. So he started with that and wrote it like this. The server was like, it was as if she'd never been in a restaurant in her life, um, which is hyperbole. It's funny. Um, but it could be funnier, and I think Kurt, Kurt made it funnier. Um, so he added, the server was like, it was as if she had never been in a restaurant in her life, and actually even that's too kind. Um, so he sort of, you know, extended the exaggeration, uh, which, which, which is good. And now, if this was all we had to do, uh, I think this would be a hard problem for, for AI, but not a very hard problem. Uh, it, it, and, and the reason, and, and we'll see, you know, what, what, what Kurt added next and sort of the nuance. And, and he sort of said, and I was a server for many years. I know it's a tough job, right? And by saying that, he sort of shows empathy. Um, he has some context from past experiences. Uh, and he worked that into the joke, right? Otherwise, it, you know, if you didn't have that line there, you know, maybe you wouldn't want it to be sort of laugh at something sort of mean-spirited. But, you know, there's, there's some empathy for, for, for that that job and um, you know, so, so we added that. And I think understanding and getting an AI to sort of handle that nuance appropriately is, what, is what's gonna make you know, an AI learning comedy pretty hard. Um, there's lots of different kinds of data that, that, that's used here uh, you know, in, in, uh, when a stand-up comedian is giving a performance. So there's audio data. And so I don't necessarily mean the language, but the tone, the delivery, the cadence, um, you know, are there pauses, et cetera. There's the, uh, the video. Um, the video aspects of what are their gestures, their body language, their facial expressions um, that, that, you know, is conveying information as well. And then the last part, which I think is really, really sort of difficult, uh, but also, you know, interesting 
is around the creator metadata, right? So that's the broader social context of the comedian, sort of who they are and what experiences they're writing about. Um, and you can imagine if you took a whole bunch of stand-up set texts, like our transcripts, um, from a number of different comedians, all of those comedians have sort of a different perspective. Um, and that goes into their jokes and that'll sort of all get sort of amalgamated and mashed together. Um, and come up, you know, the other the model. Um, and now if you're using an AI to help you, uh, you know, tell jokes or something, or if it's, you know, if a stand-up comedian is, the, the model may not, or the AI may not be able to sort of match the metadata characteristics of the, the data sets that it has, you know, that, that it's been trained from with the metadata from, from the comedian or the, the, the human performing. And to be fair to AI, this is actually a really hard problem even for humans, right? And so you could, you, you know, there's like on television shows, you know, if you have an all male writing room, it may be hard for them to write realistic female characters, right? You hear that, that kind of thing go, going on a lot. So it's a, it's a hard problem. And even harder, I think, is if an AI is performing, you know, the data sets contained in it are from the social context of, of people. And none of them are the social context of what is an AI, you know, and the embodiment of an AI when it's performing. Um, so that last one, I, I don't know how we'll solve that problem anytime soon. But you know, some of the other ones I, I think are, are, are solvable. Um, what what Manuel and I did for um, for for Jokotron is we use actually language or text data. Um, so we took transcripts from stand-up sets, uh, and and you know, humor is sort of rare in most written text, right? So on the right, you know, I we, I sort of highlighted whatever was a, a joke or a sort of funny statement from from a, a, a stand-up transcript from Kurt. Um, and then, uh, you know, I, I just grabbed like an article, a Wikipedia article on humor. And, you know, you can see that the joke density in a stand-up transcript is pretty dense. Like most, most statements are sort of contain some kind of humor in there somewhere, whereas in most writing, it's, it's not there. So, so, you know, you have to get data to train your, train your model. So if you want to train on stand-up data alone, that can be pretty difficult, right? So the corpus of stand-up transcripts is small. So for instance, GPT-3, the training data set size was 45 terabytes. Uh, so it's a pretty big data set. Um, we estimated, maybe when I estimated that the, the data set size output from all US comedians is probably around one gig, right? So we got that by saying, if there's 5,000 comedians and they each write one solid hour of standup a year, that's gonna be about one gigabyte of, of data. So this is an ideal candidate for transfer learning, this, this sort of disparity in data size. Um, where you know you can use a, a model like GPT-3 or you know some other some other language trained model, sort of understand English, and then for this specialized language, you can use your sort of you know you can sort of put put on that 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 uh, stand-up transcripts at, at the end. Um, so that and that's what we did here uh, in this case. So so you know before we we go off to to, to Kurt um, taking Jokatron for a spin, um, you know we want to give you some some parting thoughts. Uh, and one, one big one, at least that I've learned from working on this with Manuel, is that I, I think AI will be able to construct genuinely funny jokes in the future, right? There's some problems to figure out, um, but I think we'll be able to go beyond the sort of mad libs, like that's a sort of silly statement where a lot of them are, and actually say things that are genuinely funny, um, even if it's sort of a human said them or performed them. Um, the current state of Jokatron is that it still requires, it's a generative language model, and it still requires a human in the mix to deliver. Right, so so you know, not everything it, it spits out is a winner, and it still requires a person to go through and say, okay, that one doesn't make sense, that one doesn't make sense, that one's pretty funny, um, etc. So so that's where we are right now. Um, as far as future steps, um, you know, we can use uh, th there's a lot of different techniques we can use to sort of make make Jokotron uh, improve it. Um, I think one of the, the biggest things is is providing richer data sets. Um, so around some of the context issues that, that we talked about. And uh, there's also creative applications. So, you know, one, one big thing is, you know, a lot of AI sort of doesn't do things as well as people. Like there's some cases where it does, but oftentimes it doesn't, but it can just, you know, it, it can sort of beat us on, on quantity, not necessarily quality. Um, I, I think that if there's people who sort of aren't funny, um, you know, but like me, you know, you can actually use Joker trying to, you know, at least in your writing to actually say things that are funny. And so I think that expansion of, 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 uh, of application for, for people is really cool. And then also, even if you're writing something, it's, it's maybe easier to look at, you know, 100 ideas and sort of pick them and alter them than to think of 100 ideas yourself. So it can be used in, in ways like that to sort of do different things. And of course, there's, you know, business applications uh, around customer experience and user engagement. So that's, uh, that's sort of what, what, um, you know, what, what our last thoughts are. 
Jokatron's last thoughts are uh, that, that, you know, I'll, I'll leave with a joke from Jokatron, which is funny is when they say the same thing. And with a quote, you are on a plane in a boat and you have to fart. Jokatron. So that's all me, you know, me and Manuel and Jokatron have to say. So I'll, I'll kick it over to Kurt um, to sort of get a, a, a domain expert opinion. Uh, hi, everybody. Uh, so yeah, so this is, um, you know, this is a lot of people wonder what's the ideal circumstances to do stand up comedy. And this is it. This is ideal circumstances. Uh, you know, right after an hour of, uh, of bias and AI, get right into some jokes. <laughs> also, one thing Mark didn't mention is that uh, another great use for Jokatron is that if we give the gift of humor to AI, maybe it uh, will keep us around as humans once they take over. Um, so these are some jokes from Jokatron. Now, the one thing that also Mark didn't mention is that uh, Jokatron outputs, you, you give him, you know, the prompt and it outputs like a thousand jokes, you know, in a millisecond. The overwhelming majority of those jokes are useless. They don't, they're not funny. They don't, they, like, it's barely making sense. So we have to comb through and pick out the jokes that actually kind of function as jokes. And so the very first prompt we ever gave him, it, it's so difficult with the AI. I call him him, I call him, I, I don't, I, you know, I'll try and call it it, because that's what I think it should be called at this point, because uh, it has not chosen its gender yet. Now, uh, have you ever, this is the first joke, and the prompt was, have you ever noticed this is a, uh, you know, observational, classic observational prompt for stand-up. Uh, have you ever noticed Jesus Christ comes up to here? <laughs> Which is interesting because I have never heard uh, Jesus Christ was a short man jokes before. Like that's an area that hasn't been covered by a lot of standups in the past. So who knows? Maybe this is, this is a wealthy area for jokes. Um, here's another one. Have you ever noticed cars, 1909 or 2010? <laughs> Uh, that one doesn't actually make sense. I don't know why it's included here. That was a mistake to include that one. Uh, have you ever noticed that damn hip girl? So immediately, right off the bat, you can see Jokatron kind of creating its POV, you know? It's anti-hipster and it's gonna go after them, you know? Uh, already it's, it's mining the culture <laughs> for information. Have you ever noticed that veterans will put your evangelical Christian business at the whole family? Now this is great because this is, I feel like now Jokatron's getting actually political, you know? Uh, he's going after evangelical Christians. I think you can probably get an audience on board with that, but he's also going after veterans. So I, he's, it still has to learn the veterans, nobody likes when you go after veterans. Uh, so it's still, you know, he's, it's got one side, it doesn't have the other yet. And now here is where Jokatron really starts to, to show its fangs. Uh, have you ever noticed a lot of comedy, but it was done last year, 1967? <laughs> Which is, I love that this idea is that he is, that it is criticizing comedy as the future of comedy, as the possible future of comedy, saying that it's stalled in 1967. I mean, you can make that argument, guys, all right? I would push it a little further. I would say 1975, maybe. Uh, but still, he's getting in there. And then finally with the, have you ever noticed jokes? Have you ever noticed George Bush and their embarrassing things? Prairie the fuck! <laughs> so this is, there's a lot of stuff going on in this one, which I really like. First off, obviously, yes, we have noticed a lot of embarrassing things about George Bush. Excited for Jokatron to unpack that. But also, this is the first time that Jokatron has ever used a catchphrase. Uh, Prairie the fuck could be his catchphrase just to tag the end of every joke so we know it's over, especially with Jokatron, because sometimes you don't know when the jokes are over. But when you hear Prairie the fuck, then it's over. Uh, so then the next uh, input that we gave Jokatron uh, was your mom is so fat, classic joke structure. We're really, this is the building blocks, the little baby building blocks of comedy. And again, he outputs a thousand jokes. The majority of them suck. Out of a thousand jokes, three made sense. So that's, that's our success rate right now. Three out of a thousand. Uh, your mom is so fat, a 10-year God have jumped on. 
And that one doesn't even make sense. That one doesn't even make sense. Here's a better one. Your mom is so fat. Shit, you can do a little pointy. <laughs> now, <laughs> I love this one uh, because it, of the use of the word shit appropriately. Your mom is so fat. Shit, you can do a little pointy. I don't know what a little pointy is. I like that he's got his own style. He's kind of talking in his own way. Um, and then finally, for the your mom is so fat jokes, your mom is so fat, take McDonald's away from the unfortunate one, <laughs> which is now like Jokatron is saying something. Like he, now, now this is some social commentary all of a sudden. He's like, sure, we've learned how to write jokes, but what are we saying about the society of America? What are we getting digging down to? And it's embarrassing. All right, and then the final prompt uh, that we gave Jokatron is uh, just the word farts. Uh, again, because they're funny and easy, easy, you know, easy going, building blocks here. First joke, this was the literal first one that popped up out of a thousand, farts, country strong, <laughs> which is great. I don't know what it means, but I'm on board for it. Uh, here's another one. Farts don't feel its own crimes, which is true. That is very true. Joe, could, I think that's insightful. I like it. Uh, that one doesn't make any sense. <laughs> uh, here's another one. Farts. Steve Hogan not pulling out of the orange. Now this is, this is, there's a lot going on here. I don't know who Steve, Steve Hogan is, but I think he's fucking an orange and he didn't pull out. I don't know, but that seems to be the backstory for that, for that joke. Uh, here's, here's one. Farts work under threesome, jamming for a second base. I think, honestly, I do think this is interesting in the fact that the second base is obviously a thing that is involved in, in human, you know, uh, sex or, or hooking up, right? And, that, and then threesome is as well. And the fact that Jokatron put them both into one joke, it, is, it does seem like that's good. That's, we're, we're, we, we're heading in the direction that we need to be heading in for it to actually make its own very unique, specific jokes. And then this is the final Jokatron jokes, jo final Jokatron joke. It is uh, farts, a bathroom applauds on a little milk. Uh, I hope my phone didn't make a noise and ruin that, but it's farts, a bathroom applauds on a little milk, which is very true. It is also uh, a little poetic and beautiful, gross. It's definitely gross, uh, but it is kind of beautiful and poetic. So that is Jokatron. We are trying to create uh, the, uh, the first AI stand up. Uh, hopefully this is a good idea. We don't know. We're just doing it for shits and giggles. Uh, thank you so much for having me, and I'll see you later. Thank you so much, Kurt, and thank you, Jokitron. <laughs> All right, we had a wonderful time with today's networking session and our comedy, both in the chat and by the professionals. So we'll see you back here tomorrow at 1 p.m. In the meantime, um, 1 p.m. Eastern. So in the meantime, make sure to do some networking, check out the platform, make sure your profile's up to, up to date and ready to go. And we'll see you back here soon. Have a great evening and thank you so much for joining us for day one.